What's happening, guys? Another Sunday scan coming at you this time for July 11th and the week ahead. Uh, I've been trying to make them short and sweet just because, you know, I know it's summer and everybody wants to be outside, not inside, watching these things. So uh, I also uh, am headed out on the boat today, so I am going to try to crunch this into uh, as little minutes as I can. Um, awesome job last week on the comments. Some really, really good key takeaways. So I will, I'm doing a lot today. Uh, scans, S-C-A-N-Z, uh, which is one of the scanners that I use. Jason Dratman, D-R-A-T-M-A-N. You've got that. Uh, last one, you know what? You asked, you get it. Uh, IU chat for one month. And t-shirt, we're going to give away three of them this week. And one is for Value Grind, Mike P, and Greg Kozlicki. Uh, and you can contact me, webmaster, at investorsunderground.com. I just wrote IU just because I don't want to get spammed from all the bots. Um, anyway, uh, like I said, I, I, the, the market's going nuts. Uh, and, and there's a lot of cheap names that have been... Doubling and then doubling again. All these sub 50 cent uh, type bio names like TTNP, for example, it just keeps on going and then going and then going. So one thing's for sure, there's no reason to step in front of any of these. Uh, there's a, a clear exhaustion move on most of these uh, names that, that happens. And if you try to figure it out beforehand, then you're just going to get chopped, 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 chopped. If you're trading the front side of the move, there's definitely opportunities. But you got to not look for that big unwind day uh, and kind of force it and just take it. Uh, and, you know, you saw that, for example, LI, you know, we talked about that V-shaped recovery. There's plenty of trades. Now, granted, stock's gone straight up, right? But there's been a trade literally every single day if you've been present, if you've been watching. And it flushes and then the dips get bought and it comes back. So if you are not participating, adjusting, covering... Uh, being proactive with your covers into those flushes, then you know, you're probably wasting a lot of time. Uh, I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. Typically, I look to surround a move for two to three days, right? So something starts to set up, the volume starts to come in. We usually have you know, one day, two day exhaustion, pullback, uh, and then maybe one other day. So typically, two to three days surrounding a move. So you saw that with LI. You saw that with Blue Apron, APRN. Had that huge extension. There was a lot of uh, retail getting long. We had that nice little uh, squeeze out into the 4, 410 range. And then you saw me participate on the uh, post-exhaustion, 4 and 380s all the way down to the low 3s. Now, consolidating. So there's no reason to be trading it in this kind of environment. You have to wait for the next setup. We also had YSG. YSG is a great example where... You know, I, probably the most biased I've been from that two entry and it flush out is great. Uh, went to 135, didn't cover a share under 150 for, you know, many reasons. One, I was trying to be patient with a big winner. Uh, and two, the liquidity just wasn't there after it, it bounced back up. So my covers were 155, 160s, as you guys saw. Uh, and then I've been trying to work around a, a core uh, position from the, the twos. And uh, like I said on Thursday, you know, my goal is boat on Friday. So uh, I'm going to give more credit to that than my own kind of risk management. But I had unboxed and reboxed and, um, you know, I had taken off all, all my uh, position uh, for the most part, minus the one in E-Trade, which I just I'm pretty much boxed at this point. Um, so I'm not fighting it. I'm not looking to fight it. My goal is exactly what we went over. And, you know, something like that would be you surround that big move, let it set up maybe four or five days later, just like CLEU. But if you're trying to force it yesterday, the day before and anticipate what it doesn't want to do, you're going to get chopped up. Uh, FFIE, perfect example. We had the first big move, second day, and then yesterday we had that exhaustion move came back down. Now, you know, be cautious trying to force the same trade every single day. It might go into a consolidation pattern. And whether that's, you know, a, a 10 cent range, 50 cent range, doesn't matter. But it's going to be chopped, just like EVFM was, just like HTGM. HG, uh, HTGM, we had that huge ramp to 130s, then they flushed out all those retail chasers down to 90 cents, under 90 cents. The channel was 120, 130. You've got that chop. Right, and then it's going to pick a trend. It's either going to break under 120 and fade off, or 
firm up at 130 and break out as it did. But you had your trade, two to three days surround that move, move on, right? So move in, move out, move on. Uh, we've talked about that before, but that's what's working right now. There's, there's no reason, somebody asked me the other day, you know, what do you think about the risk of holding AMC over, this or that? You know, there's no reason to really have overnight, uh, overnight exposure on these types of names because they typically open plus or minus 10 or 20 cents. And, you know, who knows? By 9.30, 9.31, it might be completely opposite from pre-market. Might be down 20 cents and then up 50 cents, right? Within the first couple of minutes. So there's no real point to have overnight exposure on these huge moves like RBLX and NVAX and AMC and all these other names. Um, so that's just my two cents, the current market. Uh, a couple other video topics that I had before we get into scan for the week ahead. One was, is a better average always best? And you know, it's kind of contrary to maybe what you would think. Like, oh, I have a good average. So you know, this is a, a better trade. But, you know, thinking from the short side or the long side, is it good to have a lot at a low average or a, on the short side, a lot at a high average? What if you have a lot and your exposure is at its max, right? You've got the max size, max exposure. Yeah, sure, it's a good average if it pulls back. But if it doesn't, you have too much exposure. So for me, one thing that I reminded, you know, AMC on Friday, the 1490s level. Uh, we talked about RBLX, you know, it's okay to sneak in, but you have to see the exchange and have to see it break prior levels in order to start to get more confident. And with, with that said, it's a worse average than you would have had if you were trying to find the top potentially, right? There's two sides to that, right? If you're trying to find the top and you nail it, great, you got a good average. But if you're trying to find the top, you might be a dollar, two dollars, three dollars too early. So I'd rather have a, a worse average being on the right side of the trade than having a better average and maybe being on the right side of the trade. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest changes that I've made over the last couple of years is, you know, let everybody else try to find the top. Anytime they're going, the, you know, these sideways chop moves, let everybody else do that. I'm not in a rush. I don't need to find the top. I have no problem starting in, but there's a difference between starter size Say you start 5,000 shares and your end game is 50,000 or 100,000 shares. There's no real, I mean, obviously there's market risk and you know, to, to an extent, but there's no real risk if you're taking a, a five or 10% position uh, just to get a feel for a particular name. And as you guys saw, RBLX and NVAX, right when that exchange happened, you know, I mentioned in the room, okay, the exchange has finally happened. Now, if the retakes fail, I'm interested versus that set high. And that's a big difference than trying to find the top, find the top, find the top, getting blown out, and then it slams down without you. You're exhausted, maybe you make some back, but you're sitting with an unrealized loss, or a realized loss that was avoidable. Um, <clears throat> one thing, and I don't, I don't want to come across as sounding like the market's easy. You know, it's, it's the market. It's always uh, difficult. It's, it's always tough. Trading is tough. Uh, trading is difficult. Um, but if you don't think, as a trader, if you don't think that this tape is good, if you're having trouble, if you are going backwards, it's time to reevaluate what you're doing. We've been talking about what's working for quite some time and it's still working and it has worked. That's why I don't bring up new topics every Sunday because you know, getting prepared, surrounding that move for two or three days and moving on to the next one has and is working. And we're in a market right now where people are feeling very safe about buying and chasing and going nuts, especially in biotechs. Um, and it's just a really good time right now to be a trader. And if, you're, if you are having difficulty, that's okay. But stop looking for reasons why it's not working. Stop having an excuse but really reevaluate where you're going wrong because this is a great time to be a trader. There's opportunity literally every single day, too much, too much to focus on. And if you're losing in this market, if you're having difficulty in this market, it's probably related to one thing and you're trying to anticipate a move before it's ready to happen. Maybe you're right, maybe you're right all along, but that doesn't mean that you can make it through you know, if you're too early and it does one last flush and it gets you out and you sell and then it goes, or if it has one last, 
you know, breakout before it pulls back and it unwinds. You know, that's the point. The point is just be patient. Let it show you its hand and then participate. And I think you're going to be a lot happier, a lot less stressed, uh, have a lot more energy throughout the day rather than just, you know, tunnel vision staring, hoping that, you know, your trade works. Levels, you saw, if you were in the room this week, you saw how important levels are. You know, you could add, 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 add different levels along the way. It doesn't mean that you're in it. doesn't mean you're fighting it. It's all about understanding what would cause this trend to shift. What would cause the sentiment to shift? And I want to be on the right side of the trade. So if it goes up, consolidates, it forms a line, you know, where a congestion area, and then it starts to break higher, and it starts to do that again, that's the new line. And if it does it again, that's the new line. I don't care until it comes back under that line and fails and fails and starts to fade off. That's when I finally care. Not just because it breaches it. A lot of times it might breach it by a penny or two and come right back up. I want to see it flush under, come back and stuff and fail into that level. And each time that it retests and fails, I have no problem scaling into that trade, just like you saw with something like Siga. Um, so again, front side versus the back side is the most important part in this market because this is a trader's market. It's a trend joining market. You know, trend works until it speeds up and then it sits back and it's either going to stay heavy from there or carry on its trend. And you're going to find that information out after that first candle, after it slams. If you participate, that's fine. Some people participate, flushes, you cover, and then you can rescale in. That's typically what I do. But if I'm looking for something with size, if I'm looking for something to have patience on, I don't even care about this first pullback. I want to see how it reacts after it slams down. And you saw that on SIMPQ. Perfect example of, you know, I might dabble some at three bucks and I was thinking that it would go to potentially go to four. So I sized in accordingly, went to 385, pull back, puts on 360s, 350s, 320s, threes, slam down, and then I started to scale. Started to scale into a, a good amount of size for the trade and liquidity. But if you use too much liquidity on the front side, or if you use too much size on the front side, you are your own risk, and you might stop your own self out because you made a bad decision. Um, last but not least, YSG. I have this over, con uh, over conviction uh, bullet, and I, I sense that a lot of people uh, <clears throat> have those issues. You know, sometimes the, the feedback that you get on top, TOP or BLTE, you have all these uh, short sellers that have too much conviction, right? They're overconfident. They think they're going to be right. And then they just keep on getting bought in, bought in, bought in because they're ignoring, you know, the, the current market environment. They haven't adapted, right? So, you know, you could easily have that on YSG where you crush it, it fades off and it rebounds and you think it has to pull back. But it doesn't. If you look at Clue, CLEU, and we had the flush, came back for two, three days, and I think the fourth day had like a PR and then it unwound. So that, you know, the, after the first day, that was my thought process is let's think in terms of, you know, Clue and see if they rally it and it comes back. But you could easily exhaust yourself out of this trade by trying to force the short, right? You just had a nice correction. Corrections are healthy. That's why I like to target things that are going straight up. You saw it on IMTE. Straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. As soon as something shifts in the tape and it pulls back, fails, pulls back, fails, pulls back, that's a sign. Something's different and it's worth the risk to me. Even if it pops back up, you know, that's good risk reward type of trade. So again, be cautious of too much conviction. Same thing with EVFM, right? We had a huge rip, pulled all the way back down to like 80s, and then it should have died. It should have stayed heavy. And everybody's talking about they're gonna raise, they're gonna raise, they're gonna raise. They had warrants. They probably already did sell all of them. They're probably very well capitalized right now. We don't know until the next filings or whatever, but we can make an assumption. Um, and I think a lot of people ended up on the wrong side. And here we are, it had a nice little breakout and it has to squeeze out those folks that had over conviction, overconfidence, just like the folks trying to find the top 
on BLTE and TOP and all these other ones that have you know no volume, but they have too heavy of a conviction. They're fighting the trend. Um, so that's it. Let's get right into scan for tomorrow. All right, guys, so for the second part of SCAN, as always, I am not a financial advisor. These are not buy or sell recommendations. This is for educational and informational purposes only. If you're not okay with that, shut the video off. If you're okay with that and you want to learn how I prepare, what I look for, what kind of strategies I use, um, and you know how I gain confidence on particular setups, then you're in the right place, uh, and hopefully it makes you a better trader. Uh, if not, keep trying, and uh, as always, leave your key takeaway. I picked a bunch of uh, winners this past week just because uh, you guys crushed it. And uh, I'm thankful that you guys took the time to leave your key takeaways. You write the um, timestamp. It allows us to go back and make some pretty sweet videos. Next week, I will be giving away more t-shirts and icon meals. Uh, and uh, as you guys know, all it takes is a comment. Um, all right, let's get into it. RBLX. So we had this straight up move, really, really nice, and then it finally had that exhaustion move. And this is the exact exhaustion move that we talked about in the room. We also had one on NVAX at a very similar time where it started to rip up and sat back, rip up and sat back, and same thing over here uh, and sat back. So these are the things that I look for, and you know, it doesn't matter how early I am on these names if I have a starter position, and I always have to repeat myself because you know, then you have people, oh, well, I got squeezed out. Well, don't trade the front side if you're going to get squeezed out. Just wait for it to fail, to follow through. There's no reason to have any size that's going to take you out if you go up, you know, a buck or a buck 50 against you. It's just a starter position to get you comfortable with how it's trading, you know, what and how it reacts on particular moves. And as, at least for me, if you see it in your portfolio, you see it, you, your eyes just go to it and you start to zone in. And that's why I'm able to get some of the reads that I do. And in this case, you know, like I said, as you saw in the room, I wrote, I am now interested in sizing. For the first time, I will use size versus the highs if the next push fails. And each push that fails, I will scale into that trade. And, uh, you know, literally did not see a higher print. Um, I had covered most before I left and then my wife ended up driving so I was able to put some more on and captured uh, the next part of the move, fortunately. You can see here, I always like to kind of remind folks, having that VWAP on your chart is always very useful. Things that I look for to kind of gain a little bit of confidence in, in, in scaling um, is when you have this sort of like this base, you know, it's kind of consolidating between 43, 43.20s range and 43.70s as it kind of exhausts out that channel and breaks down, at that point, I like to go ahead and rescale versus you know, the, the bottom end of that channel. Uh, and then you can see it kind of does that again over here uh, and it starts to get a little tighter and breaks that bottom. And then at that point, you can scale in. As you're scaling in, if it stops going down, remember, that's at the point where you have the most size. So it's your job to adjust if you've been scaling in, scaling in, scaling in. It's great until it reverses, right? So anytime that it does anything that you're not expecting, oh, it should have pulled back there. It should have stayed heavy there. It seems like it's a little bit, uh, you know, not as not as heavy, and it's thinning up. You know, any of these things that go through your head is like, okay, it's time to size down. And one of the issues or, or difficulties that I have sometimes is, you know, when it flushes down, it comes back up a little. You're like, ah, I'll wait, I'll wait for it to come back a little bit lower. But you have a small window of, you know, an opportunity of liquidity to get out, right? And it, just because it pulled back and, and bounced 20 cents, you know, for me, I'd like to use that liquidity to go ahead and size out. Um, just because I sized up anticipating it to flush, it didn't. Now it's time to protect rather than have too much size and then, you know, ruin the trade altogether if it comes back. So uh, RBLX, my goal, you know, and... and you know, the way that I kind of prepare is I look at where it kind of uh, was having issues and you can see that it pretty much went into view up and then this prior high. So in the morning, I'd love to see a 41, you know, almost like a 4170 push up to 4190. So we'll call it 4170 to 42, right? Something like that blows off, sits back. If it starts to stay heavy, I would look to fade it. 
Otherwise, be cautious. You don't want to fight this. This can continue to go. It's come down from very, very, very low. Um, and you also have uh, Tesla and Rivian and all these other names that have similar charts. Not They're not related, but very similar IPO times. Uh, not Tesla, but um, RIVN kind of. I think they did anyway. Let's see. This one came out in November and RBLX came out. Uh, let's see if I'm lying or not. Well, I guess it was March. Um, either way, there were big IPOs of last year. They've come down a lot. So point being is if you do trade that fade, right? It pops up and it fades off. If it starts to grind and continue to go, do not fight the trend. We're not in a market to waste time fighting stuff. Um, but you are seeing a lot of action in that kind of recent IPO, uh, you know, not recent, but 2020 type IPOs and uh, beyond 2021. Sega was just like um, BCTX. BCTX, I went over pre-market on Friday in the room. Uh, and it reminded me of this day right here. You've got this huge move into the approval. And then what? It doesn't go up. Where's it going to go? Everybody was just long anticipating this approval. Yay, the pr approval came and we're not going up. So what do they do? They end up getting worked out. And they sell and then they don't. Well, actually, they don't sell, they don't sell, they don't sell, and then they panic out. Um, so the other thing, too, about Sega is, you know, you've got this basically 14 on the daily, 1440s, but the level that I was talking about in the uh, room on the broadcast on Friday was 1470. So looking left does not mean that it has to top there, but it is a good assumption to make that it will have trouble there. And if it proves your thesis true, then you've got to trade. And so for me, I needed a little bit of liquidity. So I started, you know, I had a really good entry uh, right off the bat, 1475 uh, and then 1460s, 1450s. And then I added some more because I wanted to have you know, my, uh, a decent position just in case there was no liquidity off the open, right? And I felt pretty confident that was going to flush, but you know, I, only, I only will size up to an amount that I'm comfortable with pre-market and then save the rest for after open because you never, you never want to be full on because you never know what's going to happen off the first, you know, couple ticks. Uh, and then after that, you saw me size, size, size. And the reason why I took a little bit more size and used the liquidity that it had pre-market is because of the fear that nobody was going to be home after the open. They do just enough and then it flushed. And that's exactly what happened. So what it did is allowed me to go ahead and scale, scale, scale faster than I typically would because I already had a pretty deep padding. So very nice prep. Uh, and ideally we get some sort of shove back up towards this range. Um, I would say your 1260s is sort of that base. I was 1250s, 1260 range. You know, you can kind of see, I'll put another line. But you can, I usually try to figure out where it's most of the congestion is. And then a blow off level would be that 13 range. You know, you got a top here, you got a top here. So ideally ramps out of the open, goes 13, starts to fade off. Otherwise under 1250s, I think it could stay heavy, chart heavy and, and fade off for, for quite some time. Um, if it starts to base at 1250s, take note. You know, sometimes people that get all excited about this headline, they were all prepared, anticipating it. Uh, then it doesn't go up, they sell. And then smart money's you know accumulating, soaking, and then you know it goes on its merry way. So that's the point. You know I might have been short biased on Friday, but that does not mean that in a week or two I'm just fighting this thing short. I surround the move, two to three days around that move, and move on. Uh, DWAC, I think we'll have a, a nice opportunity. No rush at all. Uh, you know, reminder to myself because pre-market sometimes you get that walk down and you're killing it and you feel good about it. But then you realize that all that walk down was all shorts. And then it hits a bid and it swipes and all the shorts get squeezed. So I wanna be patient. I might trade a pre-market. If I do, I gotta treat it as a pre-market trade and then focus after open uh, to be able to, um, uh, in my opinion, have the best risk reward and not put myself up with too much exposure. Uh, NVAX has been a fantastic ripper. Another example of, you know, this quiet doubler. I mean, that's a huge move. Any size you want, you know, 
hundreds of thousands, millions, it doesn't matter. This has got crazy liquidity. Um, a lot of people just made a lot of money. What we do know, we're coming into some big resistance over here. Uh, chart resistance, you can see it's over the 73. I do think it's gonna have some trouble um, in this range in, in you know, holding the 73 for quite some time. So I'd love to see a gap up and then if it starts to get heavy, 73, which is sort of that prior base here, I think it's gonna run into some issues. Um, that does not mean that I think it has to pull back and it will pull back and I'm just gonna step in front of it. I wanna be proven right. Um, so, you know, we had good levels the, the prior days. <clears throat> the um, Thursday we had uh, 7160 as sort of that key spot. You can see how it comes down, flushes, and it gives you that level. So anytime that I participate in a trade, because maybe it has a reactive it, reactive opportunity where it, it, it stuffs and slams, right? If I participate in that and it slams and it catches at a, per, uh, a particular point, rallies back some, comes back to that same point, take note of that level. That is your new level to be proactive above. Make sure you don't size above until you're on the, the bottom side of it and it starts to stay heavy. That's just a quick trick that I use say, okay, this is that level. And every single day you'll see me, RBLX, uh, 4060s, 4160s, I think they were. NVAX, I did that, AMC, 1490s, where it's fine if you participate, if you got a game plan, it's a starter, but if you're fighting, if you're sizing above that level, you're asking for it. And so that's why I always say, if you're new, just avoid it until it's under that level. Uh, because at least that way you have something where you can go set risk. A lot of people will put on a starter and have no idea you know, how to size, what to size, uh, where to risk, and that's why you wait for it to come under the levels if you're unsure. Other than that, AMC, daily driver, fantastic trader every single time. Uh, impressive rebound for sure. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, 1490s as the key, hopefully it ramps up towards 1490s, uses, you know, kind of uses this uh, 15, I think it was 15, 15, 10 or so, 15, 15. Um, that's what I'm looking for, right? So I'm looking for a push up to use this as sort of my risk. And then as it breaks under, you know, and we'll call it, at this point, it's 14, looks like 1470s or so. So a ramp to 1510s, 1520s, sits back. I'm interested in some, but... If I size any, I want to assume 1470s is going to hold. And if I want to be patient, I want to see 1470s fail and fail to follow through. 1465s fail to follow through and then start to scale in from there. Then I have a proper risk reward. ORMP, no real you know, thoughts yet. It had one big opportunity here. Nice rejection move, huge volume, but it held up pretty well. So this one will just be on watch. I think we'll have a nice opportunity. Eight's going to be a, a probably a key level and 840s. So I'd be looking 840s because they had this as sort of the base, maybe even 850s. Um, you can see that they were kind of defending it, then squeezed everybody out. The squeeze came in, slammed down. So uh, in my opinion, sentiment shift, uh, eight if it peaks out and breakout level 850. Anything above that, probably exhaustion. Uh, unless it starts to trap and trap and trap, and then obviously you can have uh, a bit more. YSG's slow, steady. Um, again, same thing that we went over. There's no reason to fight it. There's no reason to have too much conviction when the price action does not agree with you. That's the only reason why people are losing in this market. It's because they are too convicted one way or another and not respecting the price action. So let this thing do what it wants. Um, had a huge volume day, unwound beautifully, came back, uh, all the levels that were exhausting, 165, <clears throat> 170, or 163, 165 range, they ended up holding and you know getting through there. So in my opinion, it could have a lot more shorts now. Um, so ideally blow them out, wait for the exchange, and then hopefully we have another opportunity. And the reason why uh, I boxed um, the last couple days was because the SSR comes on. So, you know, if you guys read the boxing uh, blog post that we have, you know that there is a, a particular edge that I like in a situation like this uh, when SSR is on and how that gives me 
uh, a benefit over uh, other traders. Next section is continuation, drama. Uh, we talked about this last week. It had a huge move. There was a buyer in the tape for probably a week or two. Uh, just kept on getting absorbed and then it'd fade off during the day. Get bought up, fade off. So you can tell that somebody was getting in there. Uh, then it went nuts this first day. Um, I think that was that Monday or Tuesday. Then it came back and held the same support again, started to ramp back up. So I positioned in on Thursday, uh, as I said, for a big pitcher. And then I love the way um, I wasn't on desk uh, on Friday for most of the day, but nice, nice breakout um, late day and consolidate. I like that it's not going straight up. I like that it's kind of consolidating because what happens is that let's give a little bit more uh, longevity, like you've seen on EV FM. They're in no rush. Consolidates, goes up, comes back down, comes back up. And what happens is the more that that happens, the more you're working out longs from big size to smaller size, and the more you're adding, having shorts kind of add into the pile. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So that's uh, the same sort of thought process as uh, with this drama, uh, DRMA, that's, I call it that. It's not the company name, but um, that's uh, sort of the same mentality looking at that EVFM chart. AYTU, uh, same deal. There's been a buyer since, the, some wild wicks. Um, I participated in it this day. They had a catalyst July 9th today. Uh, I'm doing the scan on Saturday for tomorrow. Um, but... Uh, We'll see what happens. I, I was just hoping that they'd put out a PR and, and maybe have that secondary shove because uh, we're in the right market for it. But either way, like I said, I'm interested in selling rips, which I have done some, uh, and then just trading around that core until it stops working. So had a good position this first day when they first tweeted about the event uh, and it's held up since. It's nothing I want to marry. It's nothing that I love. It's just what is working in this market. And you know, for right now, I would assume that it's topped until 75 starts to base. If 75 bases, we've got to trade. If not, stays heavy, then there's no reason to continue to uh, stay on it. Uh, HCGM, same deal, same thing we talked about. So, you know, this is the day that we had a really big opportunity. 130 exhaustion all the way down to under 90s. That's a pretty big move. Um, then they soaked it back up. And like we went over in the room, uh, 120s to 130s was your kind of channel. You want to assume that 130 is going to have you know difficult time getting through. It did, and it failed a bunch of times, and then it finally started to base over that level. So now you're starting to squeeze out all the folks that ignored that price action, and hopefully we have some nice uh, opportunity on that one. Hopefully a blow off and fail, just like uh, YSG or something like that. DTIT, DTIL, notable uh, buyer in the tape, you can see uh, over here. Uh, no position for me, but just, you know, I like to take note of buyers in the tape and what are they doing? And, and if it starts to go, then then great. You know, you had one in this uh, OCFT as well. You can see this ramp. You can see the buyer in the tape right across here at this 135 level. And then everything's been absorbed since. So that's why I like to watch these types of charts just to see uh, if they start to trend in uh, any one direction that is beneficial. Mara, uh, nice uh, mover on Friday. I shorted um, this move, and I, I guess I overcovered. I, uh, I covered here, and then I think I put um, the bid in, and I actually filled on this pullback again. Uh, so I didn't know, uh, and uh, I ended up long over the weekend, but uh, not my intent. Uh, however, uh, chart looks good, and um, I'll be looking to trade this one both ways. Riot definitely had relative weakness versus Mara. Uh, but either way, both are back in action with Bitcoin. And then last but not least, LGMK. This one had a nice midday move. Um, <clears throat> this used to be NXTD. So that's the only reason I uh, am interested in it, just because it knows how to run. If they put out a PR, it'll be you know, 40, 50, 80% free market probably. So uh, notable, notable uh, if Bitcoin continues to rip. Uh, otherwise, you know, nothing really to... to be too excited about but definitely volume came back so uh we'll see over 140s is probably the difficult level um i think that's about it so if you guys have any questions you know the drill reach out uh if you have any um key takeaways make sure you leave the comment in the comment section otherwise have a great weekend and we'll catch you in the room on monday